Hello everyone and welcome back to another Fantasy Grounds Fridays. Um, I am Price, the uh, streaming specialist here at Smiteworks. And uh, joining me today, our very, very special guest is uh, Steve Kinson from uh, Ad Infinitum here to talk about icons. Hi there. Thanks, Bryce, for having me on. Well, thank you for uh, thank you for coming on the show. Oh, my pleasure. Yeah. Um, so you want to? Let's just let's just start pretty basic. Let's get a. Can we get like a more mm -hmm. formal introduction of yourself? Sure. Uh, so I have um, I've been working in tabletop RPGs for what seems like an absurdly long time uh, since the the late nineties. And uh, I have been uh, a designer of a number of different projects. Um, these days, I am a staff designer with Green Renee Publishing, uh, where I designed uh, Mutants and Masterminds um, and uh, was lead designer on um, Blue Rose and The Expanse um, and a number of other projects. Um, I was a uh, lead designer on the um, Out of the Abyss and uh, Sword Coast Adventurers guides uh, for Green Renin, uh, which we developed for Wizards of the Coast. Um, oh, so yeah, and, um, um, and I um, did uh, lead design for the recent edition of Trinity Continuum Aberrant uh, for uh, Onyx Path. Um, uh, Ad Infinitum Adventures and Icons are kind of my personal side project. Mm -hmm. um, my coworkers at uh, Green Renine like to joke that I have a problem when it comes to superhero games. <laughs> I can't stop designing them. Um, so um, Icons is sort of a personal project of mine. Um, so I guess that'll, that actually leads very nicely into uh, my next question to you, which is, uh, what is it about superhero games that obviously keeps uh, calling back to you? Um, I, a lot of it is just my, my personal love of superheroes and superhero comics. Um, I was, uh, uh, a, I was a lonely imaginative kid. Um, my, my family moved around a lot, uh, when I was young. Um, and so I don't think I spent more than a year and a half in the same school, um, until I was, uh, 13. Um, so I spent a lot of, of time, um, buying buying comics from, you know, the, the local convenience stores, um, and reading them, especially, uh, when my, my family was living in a, you know, living in a motel over the summer while my parents were house hunting. Um, and there was really nothing for me to do, but watch TV and read comics. Um, so, um, you know, I, I did a lot of that and, um, I was, I was a big fan of superheroes. Um, when I got into, um, role-playing games, you know, and I started with, um, I actually started with Gamma World, believe it or not, um, uh, the old uh, TSR that's, game. Yeah, that's a, uh, that's an uncommon, <clears throat> uh, uncommon mention. Right. <laughs> um, been, you know, very quickly into D&D &D and, mm -hmm. you know, the whole TSR catalog pretty much at the time. But I very quickly discovered that superhero role-playing games were a thing. Um, and they were sort of the perfect marriage of, you know, um, RPGs um, and comics, um, and I love them both. Uh, I think that uh, I think that one of the great things about superhero RPGs is that they're um, uh, part of a genre that's just really just built for for RPGs because yeah. you know uh, you know it's it's about being a hero, it's about having amazing powers, it's about having the ability to help people, mm -hmm. you know, um, and you know, and it's it's something that's based around teams. Um, you know, so it's, it's built for a group of characters to do. Um, so it's, it's really a terrific match in that regard. And I've had the most fun in many ways, running long-term superhero games and world building around superheroes and all of that sort of a thing. Um, yeah, you know, now that you, I never actually thought about it like that before, but now that you mention it, like running a, uh, a, a, a tabletop role-playing game session is a lot like a single issue of a comic book that's part of like mm -hmm. a greater series, ongoing series. Uh, I never really yeah. thought about it that way, but that is absolutely what that is almost yeah, like exactly. directly uh, copied from. It's like yeah. direct, yeah, it's, direct parallels. 
Yeah, it's part of the reason why um, in icons I use the um, a lot of comic book terminology to you know like you refer to a game session as an issue. Uh, you you know refer to you know the the a character's actions as a panel um, because you know the breakdown of character actions in a comic is just like one you know one panel on a page. Mm. That's really that's actually really clever. Um, Thank you. All right. We have a couple of questions from chat. One of them I'm going to save for near the end mm -hmm. uh, of, right. the, of the show. Uh, but uh, Fantasy Grounds Academy uh, asked if you've ever played... Uh, uh, I'm trying to pronounce this. Uh, <clears throat> Palladium Heroes Unlimited. I have not had very much experience with Heroes Unlimited. I played it once at a convention mm. uh, many, many years ago. Um, but, um, at the time, I mean, I have, uh, somewhere in storage, all of the Heroes Unlimited books because I was an obsessive superhero game collector and in some ways yeah. still am. Um, so yeah, one of the great things that I enjoyed about superhero RPGs was that I could borrow and steal things from every different game and mix and match them for whatever game I was running. Um, so I often did that. Uh, and Thilgor, yes, I can. Yes, I can. Oh, wow. That was a, that was very weird. Um, I was just asked to up my audio. Um, that there was like, I, I don't know. That was very weird on my uh, audio mixer over here. There was like a hard switch from like halfway between nine right. to three quarters. And it just like shot up. Um, uh, but is that, is that a little bit more bounced? That might even be too loud now. Mm. Um, Okay. Audio up mission successful. <laughs> um, <laughs> that's funny. All right, I got I got a little off track there, um, but no, I want you to. Uh, can you just tell me about icons as a system? Mm -hmm. Like, what sure. about icons is is special? So icons was pretty much uh, came out of the idea of I was I was tinkering around with a couple of different particular mechanical ideas. Um, one was the, the notion of um, uh, the idea of using, um, using words rather than numbers mm. um, as abilities uh, in a lot of ways. And icons does both. Um, you know, everything is expressed, can be expressed numerically, but it's also, um, you know, you're, you know, you can have amazing strength and, um, you know, uh, great agility and those sorts of things. And those actually have meaning in the context of the game. Um, I was playing around with that idea um, and looking at the, um, the fudge system uh, by Stefan O'Sullivan, um, which is a mm. greatly underrated game design, in my opinion. Um, and uh, inspiration from the original Marvel superheroes uh, game uh, that I played back in the day. Um, and so I was looking at that notion of, of, you know, mm -hmm. sort of a ranking system that had, uh, descriptive values to it. Um, and I was also looking at the, the idea of random character creation, uh, for superheroes. Um, okay. That's because one of the Cause one of the challenges, uh, for a lot of superhero games, I played a lot of champions. Um, I designed mutants and masterminds, which is also a point based, uh, mm -hmm. build your own superhero system is those systems offer a lot of flexibility, uh, but they do so in exchange for a fair amount of complexity. Uh, and even simple point build character superhero systems tend to be fairly involved uh, in terms of creating your character. Yeah. Um, and I wanted a, um, a system that you could uh, sit down at the table, roll up a group of characters and be playing you know, within 15 minutes, just get going. Uh, and you didn't have to devote a whole session to character building. I gotta say that's pretty rare in just RPGs in general that you can that you can create a character that quickly. Um, and so uh, I played around with that notion as well, um, and basically putting together a, a system of randomly rolling up your character's abilities and powers and all of that. Um, and mm -hmm. 
Uh, I play tested it uh, with my my own game group and at various conventions and the like. Uh, and the interesting thing for me about the character creation system was that it addressed a particular problem. In addition to the complexity issue, it addressed mm-hmm. a particular problem that a lot of superhero game players had, which was decision paralysis when it came to character creation. Um, yes. Because when you can when you can create any superhero you know mm-hmm. that you want, it's often hard for people to pick what they want. Um, so when I sat players down and I said, okay, do this series of roles, here is the set of abilities you have. Now you have these options for changing them, make up a superhero that fits these abilities. Um, and uh, it's actually an interesting example of uh, mm-hmm. the character on the the middle of the cover of Icons, yeah. Saguaro, the, the mighty Saguaro, the amazing man cactus, um, <laughs> is, it's a really is good a name. character is a character somebody came up with in a playtest game mm. um, where he rolled up this character and he's like, okay, so this character is, is super strong, really tough, uh, has some kind of damaging effect when people touch him and has this really like weak life support ability, you know, that's really kind of low ranked. So he's like, he maybe doesn't need to sleep or eat or something, but it's mm-hmm. not like a huge thing. And he was like thinking about it and he's like, okay, so he's like, he's a desert dweller, you know, and, and after he just thought about it for a few minutes, he's like, yes, he's a cactus man. He's <laughs> spiny. And so when you hit him, you get damaged. He's really big and brawny and super strong. And he doesn't need to drink or eat because he's adapted for the desert. Yeah. Oh, that's you really know? cool. I mean, and so like he had Saguaro the man cactus and, you know, he, you know, the player told me, he's like, I, in a million years would have never come up with this guy. If you had just sat me down cold at a table and said, make up a superhero without like yeah. having those parameters to work within. Yeah. I mean, there is, there is absolutely something to be said about um, giving, I, I don't want to say restrictions, but essentially restrictions on to mm-hmm. on stuff like yeah. that, because it, it allows you to focus. Cause I know I have the same Boundary. problem. Yeah. Boundaries really encourage people to get creative. Yeah. I, I have the same problem. If I if I sit down at a uh, at a to a TTRPG and I look through the book and there's a million options, oh, what do I want to do? I don't know. And I would imagine in a lot of superhero games, it probably uh, a lot of them devolves into well, I'm just going to make a copy of like Superman and then just name him like Ultraman. Oh wait, that one's already taken too. <laughs> And, you know, I ended up doing some stuff with along those lines mm-hmm. when I did the uh, Icons Origins source yeah. book uh, in terms of, like, presenting archetypes that, you know, are, you know, how do you do the classic, you know, uh, yeah. Batman type? How do you do the classic, you know, sort of energy controller type, et cetera, et cetera, uh, as far as that goes. But I really find that um, oftentimes the random characters... Mm-hmm. just create some really interesting uh, ideas as far as that goes. I do a, a feature on my Patreon for icons uh, called mm. uh, Super Secret Origin Saturday, um, oh. where basically I just put up a random rolled set of icon stats and let people, you know, tell me ideas. Like, you know, who do you think this character is? Uh, and That's people come fun. up with the most amazing things. <laughs> That's really fun. Um, all right, we did get a question from chat, so I'm going to pass that one through mm-hmm. right now. Uh, Michael Thompson asks, uh, Steve, what do you think of the old villains and vigilantes and its current version as Mighty Protectors? Uh, villains and Vigilantes was actually the first superhero game I ever played. Oh. Um, and uh, I, was a, I was a fan of it back in the day. Uh, my, my friends and I, my friends and I in high school, because of course mm-hmm. we were taking our gaming very seriously, um, did exactly as the rule book instructed, and we played ourselves um, with superpowers because that's in the, the whatever first or second edition of Villains and Vigilantes. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's those were the instructions where you were <laughs> supposed to stat out yourself as a VNV character and then roll up what superpowers you got. Um, so that's exactly what we did. We played our our uh, then fourteen uh, year old selves <laughs> as as superheroes. 
Um, it was, it was a glorious mess, honestly. <laughs> um, and, um, we kind of honestly moved past, um, villains and vigilantes, um, uh, when Marvel superheroes came out, mm-hmm. um, that pretty much took over our superhero gaming for quite, quite some time. Um, and I ran a very long running campaign of that. Um, and then, um, in, I don't know, college, basically in college during your experimental phase, we had a, we had, uh, we uh, ended up hooking up with champions. Um, and that was a long, uh, and sort of mixed affair. Fun. Um, so I do have to ask, uh, what was 14 year old use superpowers? My superpowers uh, were uh, that I had light control powers. Um, so I was a flying guy who could blind people with bright flashes of light and shoot lasers. Okay. I want to say I, I had the terribly unimaginative name of Nova or something like that. Um, <laughs> How many superheroes do you think have had that name character. over the his, over the history of yeah. superheroes? It's a good one, though. Yeah, it's a good one. The classic. Yeah, it was, it was fun. It was fun. You know, and there was a lot of, you know, the you know high school superhero hijinks of how are we keeping our secret identities and you know oh. slipping away, you know, in the midst of an emergency, those kinds of things, and you know, just like staging fights at our school and you know, like mm-hmm. wrecking the gymnasium, fighting supervillains. And... <laughs> classic stuff. Classic yeah. superhero yeah. stuff. I love it. Just what a bunch of nerds do, you know. Yeah. It's true. It, it, it is. Um, so, uh, I know that you mentioned that obviously you, you have quite the history of working on RPGs. Mm-hmm. Um, so that does yeah. make me, cause a lot of times people, and obviously you found your, your niche, which is superheroes, but a lot of times people find their niche and, and stick right to that. Um, I was just wondering, is there any mm-hmm. mindset differences? Say if you're working on like a high fantasy, like when you did the, the D and D stuff mm-hmm. versus, uh, writing for for a superhero game. Uh, oh yeah, what... there there absolutely is. I mean, it's it's about. I mean, tabletop RPGs have a tendency, uh, although they're they're originally intended to simulate a, a particular genre. They also have a tendency to sort of create a genre unto themselves. Mm-hmm. You know, D and D has had a huge influence on fantasy and fantasy fiction. Uh, and the way, you know, we see it as far as that goes. Um, and so there's that sort of feedback loop um, where, you know, people who have been, you know, playing D&D as kids are, are now the people who are writing the fantasy novels. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so there's, there's a definite influence. You see some of that in, in um, superhero comics and animation now, too. Mm-hmm. where I, you know, you, you see certain things and I'm like, yeah, that's sort of a gaming influence. Like... You know, comics didn't really care so much about that before superhero RPGs came along. Um, And so, yeah, I mean, you definitely want to take into account the kind of game you're you're designing or you're working with Mm -hmm. uh, in terms of what it should be, what it should reflect. Awesome. Thank you. Um, Yeah. So I want to mention just for just for the chat, um, we are taking questions. I know we've had a, a couple uh, come in already, but I want to mention that. And I want to especially mention that if you're watching on Twitch, um, which is twitch.tv forward slash fantasy grounds, if you're watching one of the other channels, I want to switch. Uh, but if you are watching on Twitch, um, at the bottom of the chat window, there's a little dice icon. It's the fantasy grounds logo. If you click on that, there's an ask question button. Uh, which sends it right into a queue and makes it so that I can't lose it in chat because it will always be open on my screen. Um, because Super sometimes helpful. it is helpful. Sometimes chat, they'll go off on a tangent and then there'll be a question that was asked like only three right. minutes ago, but now I can't find it because it's gone. Right. Um, yeah. Um. So how about... Obviously, like we, we just talked about like mindset differences while writing mm-hmm. for, for fantasy versus superheroes. Is there any like uh, differences that you have to think about while uh, writing for different superhero 
uh, RPGs. Mm -hmm. Obviously, you write Icon, sure. uh, and you've also wrote for for Mutants and Masterminds, um, and those are two mm -hmm. very different games. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, a lot of it is the the overall style uh, a, a game has, um, and you know, for some games, it's also reflective of its its setting as well. Um, mm -hmm. Icons doesn't really have an official setting. Um, I, I really wanted to go with icons as sort of the style of the, um, the superhero RPGs that I got started on, um, where the, the setting was largely just, Hey, it's a comic book superhero world. Um, and, uh, everything else about the setting was just sort of implied, uh, mm -hmm. in the write-ups of villain characters and adventures uh, and things like that. But for, for the longest time, uh, superhero RPGs didn't have settings as such. It was just, yeah, there are superheroes, there are supervillains, they, they fight. What else do you need to know? Yeah, I mean, that is, uh, that is like the core information you need for anything superhero related. Right, you know. Um, so, whereas with um, Mutants and Masterminds is, is much more a, a product of the, you know, uh, early 2000s, uh, in that it does have a very uh, detailed setting. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, the Earth Prime setting has three substantial setting source books and a lot of other uh, setting information chapters and other genre source books. Uh, so there's a lot to consider in terms of how things fit into the setting and uh, what fits the overall style uh, and the like. Uh, Icons has a much mm -hmm. more sort of animated series uh sort of feel to it uh, mutants and masterminds is definitely much more modern comic um sort of post you know bronze age style you know thinking about you know designing stuff for uh trinity continuum aberrant you know on the other hand it has a very different style um that is much more uh focused on sort of the realistic implications of people with superpowers and, uh, you know, characters who are actually changing the world uh, in mm -hmm. very significant ways, as opposed to the usual uh, comic book superhero thing, which is about sort of maintaining a status quo. Um, and your job is really to stop the villains from changing the world in yeah. bad ways. You know, so it's a very different, you know, approach to, to how things work. Yeah. Um, I'm I'm actually really happy you mentioned the kind of um, animated series feel of icons. Mm -hmm. That is what I've thought for a while uh, with the art. It looks very much like a like a Saturday morning cartoon um, in all the best okay. ways. That's that was exactly the the goal we we went for when um, I was talking to Dan Hauser, who's the line artist for Icons. Um, mm. Basically, all the art in all the Icons books is all Dan. Um, it was exactly that. I said, you know, I want to, I want this to look kind of like a, you know, a superhero animated series. Um, and Dan totally nailed that, uh, and continues to, you know, with everything he does, uh, as far as that goes. So, you know, yeah, that's just the, the style I wanted. And I think it's distinctive compared to yeah. a lot of other things out there. Yeah. There is a, there's a lot, uh, especially recently, a lot of art in RPGs going into like being heavily like, realistic or realistic adjacent so it is, is mm -hmm. very interesting to have something that is um yeah like that um yeah i mean it, oh go ahead oh no you can you can continue well i, I you know it, the expectations of of sort of the visual representation of superheroes have changed a lot since i started doing icons just because of things like the marvel cinematic universe where uh, you know, the, the notion of, of real people wearing superhero costumes um, and looking good when they do it, um, it is a relatively new phenomenon. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, now I think there's there's definitely more of a, an, an, expect, accept, an acceptance or expectation of realistic looking superhero stuff uh, as compared to the, the more cartoony versions because of that. Yeah, I will say it has been very interesting um, to see just as a genre of superheroes in general, the uh, the change in going from brightly colored, uh, kind of silly looking costumes to like the 90s and 2000s where it was like, they have to be in all black, 
They have to be dark and mm-hmm. gritty, and they can't look like superheroes. And now we're back right. to now we're making the movie costumes look very, very similar to uh, their kind of sillier costumes, and they look mm-hmm. great. Sure, sure. I mean, and there's there's interesting considerations. Like you know, I remember an artist, mm-hmm. comic book artist, talking about designing a new character's costume. And one of the things that they were taking into account was how easy would it be for somebody to cosplay as this character? Oh, that's, yeah, that's a very good point. Like, you know, does, and really like taking real practical considerations into account of like, could someone really make this costume? Um, and that's, that's it's like something the comics to make, never there's to no, about. there's, there's very little chance Peter Parker made his Spider-Man costume. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, so I got a couple of, a couple of questions. One of them is a little bit mm-hmm. off topic. But I think it's it's good to ask. Um, it's my Michael Thompson once again. Um, I seem to recall you wrote some Shadowrun novels. I did. Um, did. He wants to know how did you get that gig, and are you still uh, writing novels and or short stories? Um. So to take the second question first, no, not really. Um, I haven't written very much fiction. Uh, I have been primarily focused on game design um, mm. as I've found that that's really the thing I enjoy the most. Um, uh, the fiction writing and, and game writing are two very different skill sets. Um, and uh, I have found while I can write fiction, I don't enjoy it as much as writing games. Um, so uh, after uh, I wrote my novels, uh, I did a few short pieces of fiction here and there, but I haven't done much. Um, I got the, I got the Shadowrun gig because I was freelancing a lot for FASA Corporation back in the day. Um, they were the folks who originally published Shadowrun. Um, I had written a bunch of game material, uh, for them. Uh, I was a pretty active freelancer. Mm-hmm. They were my biggest freelance client when I got started. Um, and, uh, basically, a you know, a novel slot came up and they said, hey, would you like to pitch a novel? I'd never written a novel at that point. So <laughs> I said, okay, I'll do that. Um, I pitched it, I wrote it, um, and uh, you know, went through the editing and development process. Mm-hmm. I ended up writing seven uh, Shadowrun novels altogether. Um, and um, like I said, you know, it, was, it was something I'm glad I did. Um, and, uh, it was, it was a really valuable experience, but part of the value of it was it taught me that I'm just not cut out to be a novelist. What fun setting though, to, to get the gig oh, writing, yeah. writing novels Absolutely. for. I adore the Shadowrun setting and always have. Yeah. That's uh, one of those. I haven't, an amazing setting. Yeah. I haven't gotten the chance to, to play a game of Shadowrun yet. I really, really want to, but the setting is just so interesting and i just love how they they melded uh cyberpunk and fantasy in such a good way yeah um and michael hey don't 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 apologize for going off topic we love going off topic on this show we do it very regularly i just make sure to bring it up uh but yeah don't don't apologize for going off topic um it's it's always nice to get those little like breather break questions right um, uh, so uh, what are you working on currently working on any, any new icons books, anything you can talk about, I should say. Sure. Um, so let's see, uh, icons basically, uh, for the past year and a half has been focused around the icons Patreon, uh, that I started, um, back at the beginning of, uh, 2021. Um, and, uh, that was, uh, partially because I had, um, I had done a number of icons books, um, and, uh, I was looking for, um, honestly, something that would give me some structure and accountability uh, Mm -hmm. in terms of producing icons content. I'm, you know, a long, long time self-employed, uh, creator. Um, with, uh, a day job and freelance gigs and, you know, uh, a lot going on. So I knew that if I didn't specifically make time for icons, um, and especially in a way that made me 
you know, accountable for mm-hmm. a deadline, um, that stuff would fall by the wayside. I didn't want that to happen. So, um, the, the Patreon basically puts me on the hook for monthly content so that, um, I can, you know, keep producing so far as that goes. Um, what I ended up doing, uh, last year, uh, was basically, I, I created roughly a 10 to 12 page article for icons every month. Um, and it was varying content. One of the great mm-hmm. things about being in charge of your own game line is I can do whatever I want. Um, you know, from month to month. Um, and, uh, then at the end of the year, I, uh, collected everything, uh, from the Patreon's output that year. Um, and I put out, um, uh, the icons annual one book, Mm. um, that was basically just, here's the year's worth of the Patreon's content. Um, the patrons got a, a free copy of the PDF, um, and I put the book out in PDF and print on demand. Mm-hmm. Uh, and pretty much I'm working on the same trajectory for this year. Uh, you know, of uh, if um, once I come to the end of the year, I've got, you know, another, you know, uh, 160 so pages worth of content. I'll put out ICANN's annual two and, you know, okay. uh, keep on going with that. Um, other ICANN's projects are, are focused on updating some older um, icons material, mm-hmm. um, and, uh, collecting some of the older, uh, adventures into, um, uh, print on demand books, uh, so that folks can have them in print, uh, cause yeah. most of them are too short to do as individual print products, uh, so far as that goes. Um, and, um, you know, and working with folks like mm-hmm. fantasy grounds to, to get icons, um, virtual tabletop options, I know, yeah. up and out there for folks. Um, that's the main icon stuff. I, I like I said, I, I'm a staff designer for Green Renine Publishing as mm-hmm. my regular gig. Um, so it's working on various uh, design projects uh, for them, um, okay. and uh, some of our mutants and masterminds stuff, um, and uh, some stuff for the uh, adventure game engine or age system. I did some work on the upcoming new edition of Fantasy Age, um, as well as uh, continuing to write some stuff for The Expanse uh, and Green Ronin's uh, other games as well, uh, which has been pretty fun. And I'm, I'm also writing uh, a few more pieces for uh, Aberrant uh, for Onyx Path. Okay. <clears throat> um. Well, so uh, with... Uh, with that answer, I do want to give uh, a couple of mentions first. Um, Belmorte has been uh, posting, has got your Patreon posted into the chat. So if anybody is interested in right. checking it out, uh, there's a nice, easy link for everyone. Um, and the next thing is that um, right now for this week, um, icons and I think maybe a couple of mutants and masterminds are on sale on Fantasy Grounds. So if you're interested awesome. in... Uh, picking up uh, a handful of those, uh, maybe all of them. Uh, <laughs> right now is a is a great time to uh, to go and get yourself started in um, icons, which I really need to. Uh, I've got so many games in my backlog now, but I need to. I need to just start mm-hmm. getting through them. I hear it. <laughs> yeah. Every uh-huh. basically every time. It's it's even worse because every time we get a new system at Fantasy Grounds, I'm like, oh, I gotta play that. I gotta I right? gotta play it so I know yeah. at least a little bit about it. And then I'm like, wait, I haven't even played all of our backlog that we that we've had for for years now. I need to just start like yeah. designate a week. Like this week, it's Icons Week. Next week, it's the next game. Yeah. It's uh, it's a lot. So yeah. That's not a bad idea. That's not a bad idea, um, Bill yeah. Morte. Uh, we can cosplay an Icons game for Fantasy Grounds piece. <laughs> not a bad idea. Um, I don't have a superhero costume, but I did go to Comic Con as Peter Parker once. Yeah. Um, I even made myself a little Daily Bugle press badge, um, and nice. I had a backpack with the Spider-Man mask partially sticking out. It was pretty fun. Um, That's awesome. 
So considering your love of comics and superhero RPGs, have you ever considered mm -hmm. a comic book based on icons? Yeah. Even if it's as just um, like a like a single little one off like special. Yeah. Um that's that idea has been floated a lot. Mm -hmm. Um pretty much ever since I've I've been doing superhero RPGs is when are you going to do a comic based on these characters? Um and um it basically runs into two primary roadblocks. Um, yeah. One is that uh, comics are expensive to make. Oh, yeah. Um, and are very labor intensive, um, especially for the artist. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and uh, the other the other one being that um, I am not, as we have established, I am mm -hmm. not much of a fiction writer. Uh, I'm great at imagining all kinds of comic book stories uh, retroactively, <laughs> you know, in terms of building characters' backgrounds and things yeah. like that. Um, and I'm good at designing superhero adventures, but um, writing comics has just been one of those those codes I haven't cracked. So um, maybe if I had the amount of time that would be needed to do that, mm -hmm. that would be a thing, but... Yeah, I'm also like so busy that it hasn't been something that I've been able to really dig into. Yeah, well, we can uh, we can chalk that up as a maybe someday. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think that that there's something to be said for short pieces of comic, mm -hmm. um, you know, as as game inserts and things like that. Um, Crystal Frazier, who's the um, developer of Mutants and Masterminds over at Green Renine now. Um, did some terrific stuff in the Basic Heroes Handbook um, to introduce people to the system by using comics as examples of play. Oh, that's a, that's a really cool idea of doing yeah doing that, right? And just basically having the you know like the narration boxes mm -hmm. that you would have in comics be rules sidebars essentially. Oh, that's really cool. This, is, this in game terms is what is happening in this panel. <laughs> you know, that's really that's. See, because a lot of a lot of RPG like player books uh, now have that type of section, but they're always mm -hmm. very boring to read through because it's always like text so bubble from this player, text, text bubble from this player, text bubble right. from a uh, narrator telling you about stuff. That's a really cool idea of doing it as a uh, as a yeah, book. It's great. Yeah, we need we need more of that in the industry. That's a that's a great mm -hmm. idea. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and it would work super well for any RPG, really. You could do it for a mm -hmm. fantasy game or a science fiction game just as easily. Yeah. It's just, it adds some adds some visual flair to it. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah, it's totally an ideal steal from Crystal at some point when I have the opportunity. <laughs> <laughs> that, I mean, it's a good one. That's a good idea. Mm-hmm. That is a very, very, very good idea. Yeah. All right. So I know we talked just a little bit about, uh, you mentioned Icon's origins, which you said was mm -hmm. um, largely about um, like archetypes. Yeah. yeah. You want to you wanna just give me, give me a rundown on that? Sure. So origins is basically just a process of expanding on character creation uh, mm -hmm. in icons um, and um, looking at a bunch of different options. I'm a, I'm a big options guy uh, when it comes to uh, game design in general. Um, I think some of it is just my tendency to tinker with things. And so I will come up with alternative ways to do things. And I'll just be like, or you could do this. Um, when I was um, designing the second edition of Mutants and Masterminds, I came up with so many optional rules and sidebars that we ended up making a separate book out of them um, called the um, Masterminds Manual. Uh, mm -hmm. It was basically all just a book of optional rules because I can't stop yeah. designing them. Um, and so uh, Origins is basically... Uh, offering some alternate paths to character creation um, okay. and does things like here are a bunch of archetypes, you know, of classic superhero types that are built as starting icons, characters 
that you can just make a couple of quick decisions uh, about, mm -hmm. and you're basically ready to go. You just pick one, make a, a couple of decisions about their abilities, you're done. Um, the the book also goes into um, what's what's called character modeling, uh, which is basically the notion of uh, just making up characters. Uh, Icons is a simple enough system um, that you can just you know just describe your character and say, okay, well he's good at this and he's great at this and he's you know not he's poor at this. Um, and, you know, go through that whole process and you've got a character, uh, you know, essentially. And wow. okay. you don't necessarily have to be married to the idea that it has to be dice rolls mm -hmm. and it has to be a bunch of adding up a bunch of numbers uh, in order to make the character work. Um, and uh, that is that was particularly based around the idea of, of benchmarks and, you know, making it clear of, well, what is when we say somebody is a great you know, prowess, what do we mean by that? Um, and, you know, providing a lot of that context uh, for, for players and game masters to just say, okay, well, that sounds about right. We'll call it that. Um, and just generally offering more detail on things like uh, the, the specialties, um, which are skills, basically, uh, in the system, and um, character creation options like NACs, which are not part of the core system, but are a popular add-on mm -hmm. uh, that a lot of folks use um, and uh, things like that. So it's just, you know, more stuff, more tools for, for players yeah. to be able to create their characters. Fun, 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 fun. Hey, um, so other than, other than your own system, other than, other than icons, mm -hmm. what's your favorite system to play? Gosh, I, you know, I'm a, I'm definitely an RPG. Um, I, I was going to say something really rude, polymath, <laughs> let's say. Um, but I, I'm equal opportunity when it comes to RPGs. Uh, mm -hmm. I love all kinds of games. Um, so it's, it's really all over the map. Um, uh, you know, I, um, I enjoy, I, I'm playing a, um, a D and D campaign right now in 5e um, a friend of mine is running a Starfinder game um, that um, we're advancing. We're up to like ninth level in, and has been a blast. Um, uh, I I like um, you know I like Fate uh, mm -hmm. and uh, Fudge, and there are many derivatives. Um, I'm a, um, a big fan of um, uh, the the Torg RPG from back in the day. The the revival of that game has been a but also been a real blast to see. Uh, I ran a, a, a long uh, campaign of Torg for my friends back in the um, early 90s, uh, and we had a blast with it. So, you know, I've got yeah. far, far more RPGs than I, I will ever have time to play, yeah. honestly. I have the same problem. My biggest problem is I don't have enough players to, uh, to play in all of yeah. these games, and so many of them are like, so so many so many players are like no I have one game that I really really like and that's that's my game mm -hmm. yeah um, yeah I get that and that's honestly where an area where VTT has really opened things up mm -hmm. for a lot of folks oh yeah um, because they're not as limited to uh, a geographic area you know yeah. they the, the there are no players near me problem mm -hmm. um, and it's much easier to advertise. You know, you could just create a game and say, looking for players, you know, mm -hmm. uh, as far as that goes and find people who are probably interested in playing whatever it is you want to run um, or vice versa, looking for a game that's looking for players, Yeah, you know, for something that you want to try out. Yeah, that is a that is a very good point. Um, especially if you're willing to be the uh, the DM, I'm sure you'll you'll have no no mm -hmm. issues or the, the GM, I should say. That's that's me yeah. because I mainly play Dungeons and Dragons so I constantly use DM and I'm like I shouldn't I hear it I hear but. it yeah I, I my interest in in playing lots of games has usually thrown me into the game master role because I'm mm -hmm. the guy who will come to my game group with hey I got this new game we yeah. should play it you know and everybody's like are you gonna run it 
Yes. Yep. That's yeah, that's me. That's me. I'm the one with even though I mostly play Dungeons and Dragons, I actually don't own a lot of Dean physical books because I have them all on, mm-hmm. on Fantasy Ground. Uh right. but I own a bunch of books that are all just various, like the core rules of various games, because I like to read the core rules in a physical book. Yeah. Yeah, I hear uh, that too. So and the sad thing is a whole bunch of those I'll probably never end up actually getting to. Yeah. Yeah, I've I've still got plenty of games that I've never played, unfortunately. Yeah. Yeah, it is it is unfortunate. Um so, uh what gaming conventions do you frequent, if any? Um and is there any chance that you'll end up at TotalCon in Massachusetts at any time? I've been to TotalCon, although it's been quite a few years uh since I was there. Um, I used to do conventions pretty actively um, uh, back, of course, when, you know, pre-pandemic, when we were yeah. going to conventions. Um, and um, uh, yeah, I used to be quite active at conventions. I have cut back on convention appearances uh, even before the, the pandemic. Mm-hmm. Um, nowadays, uh, we're just getting back into it. Um and um, I'm only scheduled to go to uh, Gen Con this year, right now. Um, mm-hmm. But as things open back up again, I'm you know I'm always willing to consider the notion of of doing conventions. Honestly, for me, conventions are definitely a work thing. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, uh, I don't really go to game cons very much for fun, um, just because. I've got game uh, my own gaming groups, both in person and online, that I'm doing stuff with, and yeah. I barely have barely have enough time for that. Um, <laughs> so you know, but uh, you know, I'm always willing to consider if a convention wants to have me as a guest. You know, I'm always willing to consider it. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it's just a matter of uh, you know they need to drop me a line and ask. Yeah. So many uh, gaming conventions that could very easily to just take up all of your time too. So oh, I yeah, totally these get. Days. I totally get like cutting back because now like every major city has at least mm-hmm. two gaming conventions. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. It used to be convention season was was basically in the summer, mm-hmm. but now there's there's a major gaming convention at least every month, if not every other week. Yeah. Somewhere. Yeah. And there's definitely, there's definitely still that like season could starting up right now where they're all starting mm-hmm. to run together in my head. And I forget like which one was last week, yeah. which is the one that's happened this week. Um, yes. Yeah. So we've, we've definitely hit the uh, convention season coming back. Yeah. But, um, but I, you know, I enjoy doing conventions when I can. Mm-hmm. Um, so I do want to I want to talk a little bit because when reading about icons, obviously I mentioned I haven't I haven't played, but I saw that mm-hmm. um, you have a lot about it having a, uh, a a sort of open game license for people to create their mm-hmm. own um, it does. supplements for it, and I was just interested about that because that like some of the big ones, you know, like like D and D has their like open SRD rules, yep. uh, but I was just interested yep. about like why maybe you did that um and then mm-hmm. like how it is uh benefited so icons like a lot of modern rpgs is built on the open game license um i you know mm-hmm. uh, worked with um open license games like fudge uh mm-hmm. and uh the like to um essentially start with some of their foundational mechanics um and so um, the, the ICONS compatibility license, which is sort of a supplement to the OGL um, that is a, is a brand logo identity, um, mm-hmm. is really, for me, just sort of a, a paying it forward kind of uh, setup uh, that acknowledges that, you know, I've, I've built plenty of my games and my mechanics mm-hmm. on the, the work of people who came before me. Uh, and I, you know, want everybody else to have that same opportunity and the open game license affords that in and of itself. 
But the compatibility license basically just lets them say, hey, this is an icons thing. Um, and uh, for me, that's, you know, all for the good in that I'm, you know, icons is basically me and Dan Hauser. Um, and mm -hmm. uh, we can only produce so much content, uh, you know, at any given time. So I'm happy to have creative folks who want to do superhero games, adventures, settings, what have you, uh, to use the icon system to do that. You know, not everybody needs to invent an entire new superhero game because they want to write an adventure or they want to write a setting or something. Um, and it's, it's worthwhile having an existing game that has, has a system and a fan base and materials mm -hmm. to build on as far as that goes. And I, I, you know, to me, it's a win-win, you know, uh, icons yeah. gets added support and more material out there. Other folks don't have to reinvent the wheel, um, mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, build an entire brand from nothing, uh, for their thing. Um, so, you know, it's just a great opportunity as far as that goes. Yeah. So I guess, uh, speaking about like people creating, um, content for icons or just, just people in general mm -hmm. get just first getting into, uh, creating for TTRPGs. Do you have any advice, uh, that you would give? Well, I guess, you know, nowadays I, I would say that, you know, there's never been a better opportunity for folks, you know, to create their own uh, RPGs, um, whether it's a complete game or supplements for existing material with community content programs and open license programs uh, and uh, those sorts of things available. Mm -hmm. There is just an endless wealth of options for, you know, creating and publishing your own thing. Um, and with electronic publishing and print on demand, uh, you know, you can, you can certainly do what I'm doing, which is essentially that. Uh, and, uh, you know, uh, it's, it's a great opportunity for somebody who wants to, to put their own stuff out there. So I guess my, my main advice would be to, to go ahead and do it. You just, know, just do it. <laughs> if, if, yeah. If you're, if you're, yeah. if you want to, yeah, go ahead. What's stopping you really? That's not good. That's actually is really good advice because a lot of people, um, I find, cause I, I have friends that, that write, um, mm -hmm. for yeah. teachers, PCs. a lot of, a lot of all they needed was somebody just to tell them, just do it. There's no reason, mm -hmm. there's no reason not yeah. to. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's, there's, there's really no arcane secret as far as that goes. I, mm -hmm. I've also had conversations with people who are been interested basically and, and are, are sort of waiting for permission. Yeah. Um, you know, as far as that goes, I'm like, you know, you don't need permission. Just go ahead. You know, uh, you know, I've had, I've had, you know, in cases where I've done line development or I've been hiring freelancers, people will be like, well, how do I get to write for your thing? And I'm like, well, you can ask <laughs> like, yeah. you know, if you're waiting for an invitation, that's not coming. But you know, if you, you want to drop me a line and say, Hey, this is what I'm interested in writing. We'll talk. Awesome. Yeah. So, uh, my, uh, my fiance actually just barely got into, uh, writing mm -hmm. for, for TTRPGs. Yeah. And that's what, that's what they needed was that little push of just, just start, just write something. Mm -hmm. Even if it's just yeah. like, a, a, I think what we started with, uh, cause I helped them with a lot of, uh, mm -hmm. layout and design was like, right. write a, write a, like a four page adventure, write a really short yeah. little adventure. Yeah doesn't have to be a, you know, your first project doesn't have to be a magnum opus book. Yeah. Yeah. You don't need to write a core rule book for a game that doesn't exist yet, or you don't need to, uh, <laughs> you don't need to write like a, a big, like j massive, like 300 page adventure. Mm hmm. No, you know, I mean, honestly, for a lot of, hobbyist RPG writers, it's mm -hmm. not um, writing too little that this that's their problem. <laughs> you know, I mean, mm -hmm. I know plenty of GMs who have huge binders full of material of like, this is the, you know, 800 pages of material I've written yeah. for my campaign that I've been running. 
yeah i i know i know a few like that where they have like this big binder i'm like you could you could publish that as a setting I'm like no yeah, i nobody would ever nobody would ever but nobody like look at it nobody check it out but you don't know that right well nobody can until you do so. yeah all right, we're getting we're getting close to the end. We got about ten minutes left. So any anyone got any last minute questions? Right now is the perfect time to throw those in. Remember, if you're watching on Twitch, you can use the uh, the dice icon to drop those right there. Um, but since we're getting close to the end, I think it's finally time to ask that question we got at the start of the stream mm -hmm. that I said I was going to wait on. And that question is, what's your favorite superhero? I get that a lot. I'm um, sure you do, man. <laughs> And you'd think the number of times I've gotten this question, I've gotten better at it, and I really haven't. Um, I don't know that I have a favorite superhero. I have a ton of comics that I love, um, but um, I, I really am not sure about that. Um, I, mm. I am um, right now tremendously enamored uh, with um, Wiccan and Hulkling. Um, uh, for Marvel Comics, um, mm -hmm. just because uh, they're they're such incredibly charming and wholesome queer representation yeah. uh, in comics, um, and I I really hope that Marvel continues to do more with them mm -hmm. as characters. Um, you know, it's it's Pride Month, so Marvel and DC are both doing their you yeah. know their big you know anthologies of mm -hmm. of queer characters and creators and content and things like that, which is great. And I'm always super excited to see, but it would be nice to see more of them as something uh, that was just a regular part of yeah. the, their publishing schedule rather than things that they bring out for pride month mm -hmm. as, you know, a special thing. And then not the rest of the yeah. year, as far as that goes. Yeah. Um, and then the, there was a related question to that that came about halfway through the stream, which was um, mm. related to that. Do you have a favorite superpower or like a favorite superpower type? Um, I am a big fan of, uh, for lack of a better term, the energy controller types. Okay. Um, you know, the, the green lanterns mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, anybody who, who, shoots beams and creates force fields and, and yeah. makes constructs and things like that um, is, is definitely my jam. Uh, I love those characters. Um, and so needless to say, I am one of the people who is actually pretty psyched about uh, the, the slight change in Ms. Marvel's powers oh, yeah. for the Disney plus series. Mm -hmm. She's basically that character. And so yeah, they, they like, basically, yeah, from what I know about <laughs> it, they basically like, turned her from, uh, a almost a Mister Fantastic type clone, to mm -hmm. more like more like Green Lantern with the with the cool energy stuff. It also, yeah. just is visually impressive on on screen. Yeah, yeah. Particle the effects, effects are awesome. Are, <laughs> are probably a lot easier than a lot of the morphing effects they'd have to do. So far as that goes. Yeah. And then equally related, mm. is there a superpower that you wish that you had? Oh gosh, I don't know. I vary about that. You know, I, I, of course I've thought about it. Um, you know, and strangely enough, the superpower I wish I had, um, most often is, is like super useless to be a superhero, <laughs> um, is, um, I wish that I had like, uh, the ability to like speak and understand every language. Um, you know, I'm somebody who loves, words and languages yeah. um and i think that would just be such an amazing ability uh to be able to go anywhere and understand and talk with anyone uh so far as that goes but yeah it would be a terrible superhero power uh, um well i mean they didn't they goes. didn't say you had to be a superhero with the power they just wanted to know what right? power you wanted um yeah. and honestly like no it wouldn't be great for being a superhero but you know what it would be good for right? being a writer mm, right you yes. can you could if you could do that you could translate your own your own, own material work. yeah um yeah. and then there's no sense tell, of any context being lost yeah because it's weird to see your your work in another language um and i've seen translations of my mm. books and been like okay looks good 
I have no idea what it says, so yep. I'm just going to trust, trust the translator you... got it right. Yeah. I'm going to trust that they got it right. Yeah. Yeah, that's... Yeah, there's an addition of, there's an addition of icons in China. Mm. Um, and I have a copy of the book uh, in, oh, that's in really Chinese. Cool. And, you know, it looks good. <laughs> but I have no idea what it says. Yeah. Uh, well, maybe that's your uh, maybe that's your uh, tipping off point to start learning uh, some extra languages. Right, I guess so. <laughs> oh, all right. Well, I feel like we are basically at the end of the show, so I'll mm -hmm. I'll we'll give a couple of extra seconds in case anybody was typing a question. And it didn't right. go through yet, but because uh, it happens. Uh, but yeah, thank it. you, thank you so much for uh, coming on the show, talking to us about icons and other superhero nerdy fun stuff. My pleasure. Glad I could do it. All right. Well, I'm going to take a few seconds. I'm going to really quickly go and look to see if anybody is streaming with Fantasy Grounds, so we can prep a raid. To drop on them, I like to uh, like to uh, drop our viewers off on other people using Fantasy Grounds. It helps mm -hmm. kind of keep the community going. Absolutely. Um, uh, Michael Thompson says uh, thank you as well. Thank you for the questions, Michael. I appreciate it. Um, but yeah, so is there anything, uh, anything you want to plug or mention before we, uh, before we end the stream, by the way? Well, obviously folks should check out Icons on Fantasy Grounds. Um, and uh, please uh, feel free to drop by uh, patreon.com slash Steve Kenson, which is the Icons Patreon, um, to see what I'm doing over there. Um, there are some public posts, including mm -hmm. Secret Origin Saturday, um, and some various updates as well as the patrons only posts, uh, that folks can take a look at, um, and check out icons on, uh, drive through RPG, uh, where you can find all of the existing products, uh, in PDF, uh, and, uh, many of them in print on demand. Uh, I'm can't wait for, uh, just, just, just wait. I'm not gonna. I'm not even gonna say that one on stream. Just wait. They were mentioning a uh, uh, w w wishing for feature on on Fantasy Grounds. Mm. So all I'm gonna say on that is just wait. Also, this is um, a little bit too perfect, uh, but I found someone streaming uh, Dungeons and Dragons using Fantasy Grounds, and they're mm -hmm. playing Out of the Abyss. Sweet. Um, so for those that are watching on Twitch, uh, we're gonna send our viewers over there. I want to. Uh, quickly just make sure uh, they're actually like being responsive, you know. Mm -hmm. But yeah, sometimes you find a sometimes you find a stream and they're they're not actually even there. They've just got it kind of up and they've walked away. Yeah, um, and that's not yeah. that's not fun to send everyone to. But that, no, they sound of an adventure. So. All right. Um, yeah, so everyone, I hope you have a great rest of your day. Um, remember that tomorrow uh, we've got uh, Josh's map creation stream at 3 p.m. Uh, Eastern time. And tomorrow night at 9 p.m. we have my Dungeons and Dragons actual play stream, Fable Dice. Um, and we're going to have some, uh, some fun, spooky goodness at that. Um, it is a Curse of Strahd stream, so if you love your dark gothic and vampires mm. and stuff, uh, come hang out. Well, I guess that's not going to happen. Oh. Um, they only accept raids from teammates and followed channels. Oh, well. That is sad. All right. Well, I think we will... Um,
I think our alternative will be... Um, hold on, because I saw one. Sad was really hoping to send us to, uh... Yeah. Out of the abyss. All right. Our alternative will be... Uh, we're going to go over to Deadly Force, also doing uh, some Dungeons and Dragons. I I agree, uh, Thorich and Ironside. Leave leave the doors open to be to be raided. Mm -hmm. All it will do is help you out. Uh, but anyway, thank you so much. Uh, thank you. Steve, for coming and talking to us. Yeah. Um, thanks, everyone, for watching. And uh, go check out Icons.